Right, so here's the uh, leakage tester project. I've started building a case for it. As you can see, I didn't want to bore you with the whole assembly part. I use a nibbler tool to take these edges out. Now this switch here is going to be a, that's a test switch. Right, that wasn't, wasn't on the original design, which you would have already seen. It will discharge a capacitor that's under test, discharges any residual power. So when you've done the test, it should actually make it safe to touch. And um, when you push it down, it will hold the voltage on. So you have to hold that down in order to actually do the test, just as a safety feature. Um, obviously you've got the power switch. This LED here, I'll, I'll program that onto the Arduino, is I'll make it so that when there's a high voltage above 30 volts, um, that LED will come on to show there's a potentially dangerous voltage there. Um, I think 32 volts is the standard classification of uh, high voltage. Below 32 volts is deemed to be low voltage work. So I'll probably set it like 32 volts somewhere, or roughly that. So where the voltage is on the capacitor, um, or the device on the test, will determine if that light's on. So when it's discharging, it'll be on until the voltage has dropped down, that kind of thing. And that's the plan. So you can see they've got the new board layout in there. I've got it roughly placed in. So I've made a little PCB here for a low voltage power supply. This one of those little transformers I did in the mail bag recently. All this does is generate about, I don't know, it's about 11 volts DC roundabouts. Obviously I haven't tested it yet, but we'll find out. So it's 230 volts in, about 11 volts or so DC out, which will then come over here and power this voltage regulator over here. So it's got a bit of smoothing um, there, and it's also got smoothing on this board already, which I've designed in. So that's the DC supply which will run the Arduino. Now you see a little strap just across here. What I'm doing is I'm actually putting the negative rail from that supply to the chassis, which is also going to be tied to the earth, the main earth coming in from the mains. And the negative from this is also going to be tied to the chassis. I think that's going to be okay. We'll find out. But um, the theory being then that this cannot be live. It'll have to be earthed and it's all ground referenced. That's what I'm trying to achieve there. Uh, standoffs, you can see I've got this one stood off a bit higher than this one because I say it's got 240 volts on there so I want a bit more clearance try and keep it away from things and um, yeah so soon I'll be able to populate this board uh, I've used these one mil blinder plugs and I've got holes through the top there as well now it's different options for usage I was actually tempted to have a wire lead coming out with quad clips on it I thought well if you want to bench and touch that you might short settings so I thought best of all you have it deliberate you know use use the leads you want to use and that sort of stuff so obviously that's the transformer I'm going to be using in the end which I did show in the mailbag uh, four 115 volt windings is what it's got on it so um, I can do 115 volt out for one set of windings which is what I planned I may not do that I might actually just use a 230 volt go through one doubler stage and that'll give me more power because if you're going to go through a double it loses um, current carrying capacity oh I've got to mention these little packs here, I'll put a chuck some links down below in the description. These little um, packs you get from Banggood and other places like that. These are 2mm, I think these are 2mm spacers. I think there's a lot of smallest ones you can get or something like that. These are perfect, perfect for doing the display mountings. Because the holes on the displays, this is a spark fun one, they're not 3mm. I think they're only about 2.5mm. Um, so I've got a pack of these, which I purchased especially for doing this kind of thing. I've also got a pack of 3mm ones which I've used for all the other bolt stuff. Um, I also have a small supply of screws. Um, I use a lot for CB work, so when I'm replacing case screws on CBs, I'll, I'll use these because I've got a stack of them. So I've got the boards here. I'm going to transfer various parts over from this board onto this one. Um, I'm not going to be using this prototype again, so I'm going to take over you know things like the capacitors because they're quite expensive relatively. Um, a few bits and pieces I'm not going to worry about headers and stuff like that, it's not worth bothering with. I think I'll probably pull these in the diodes off and put them over because I haven't got many of those and the same for the voltage regulator too. I'll transfer that over there as well. So I'll transfer it over onto the new ball and build that up. Right, so I'm going to get this desoldered and take off the bits I want to keep. Alright, so I decided to give up on the uh, solder sucker because that's just not cooperating very well. So I decided to fire up a Keiko with uh, my new handle. It's not really a chisel tip, is it? It's I don't know what it is. Anyway, I'll really describe that as. Anyway, it's a wedge kind of tip. It has a bit more heat output, strangely. Yeah, straight out. Cool. I've got it set to 300, but I don't trust the temperature. I think the temperature is actually hotter than what it says. It just seems like it's. Uh, a bit more effective than I would expect it to be. 
I mean, this is a big ground plane right there, both sides, double sided board. Managed it. So, you know, it seems to be working fine. There's not that much I want to salvage, um, there's just a few bits and pieces really. Right, so I'm going to try and get this voltage regulator off here. This could be interesting. The audio is okay. It's a bit noisy, this thing. Oh, the ground plane's starting to go. Here we go. Gotcha. So that's what I'm salvaging off that board. The rest of it can stay. I don't care about the rest of it. Let's start putting this together. Yeah, that's better. It's getting hot. Surprise, surprise. This is not soldering very well. I think I need better flux. That's not working. Where's the other stuff? This will fix the problem. That's much nicer. Okay, cool. So what I've ordered is a um, little temperature probe for soldering iron tips. So you can check the temperatures. I meant to order one ages ago, but I thought I'd done it. And I don't have one, so I because um, I want to verify this tip temperature because I'm not sure it's right. It just seems like it could be wrong. Now I'm gonna, uh, which bit should I do next? I actually need to put some more parts in because I've, I've changed the design a little bit. It now has three voltage sensing circuits instead of two. It's, before I was trying to calculate the voltage of the um, device under test and the input voltage. Um, I was trying to do a calculation based on the current draw which in theory should work fine, but practically it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. So I decided to change it, add on the ability to test voltage at the power supply end and the device on the test end, and just measure both places at once. All right, so I've installed the salvage parts. Well, they're placed, they're not soldered yet. We'll start with these bigger parts, because they tend to flop around a little bit. Seems like I need to get some more flux pens. Trying to get the heat right through the board as well, so it solders right through. See, so there's nothing wrong with these capacitors, you know, reusing them is fine. No reason why you shouldn't reuse parts if they're basically brand new, you know, why not? I know these are brand new caps, alright, so it doesn't really make sense to replace them again. I like to try and recycle things where I can. Maybe it's just because I'm tight, I don't know. So this new uh, fake Heiko is actually working okay. Um, it's the FX951, which you would have seen, hopefully, in a previous video. I did a little review on it. Um, paid for it myself, purchased it myself, so it's you know something I wanted to get. It's not been provided to me for free or anything like that, so it's actually one I have to use myself, and I've decided to purchase it, because I wanted to try and upgrade to what I was already using. And you think that a fake you know, Chinese copy of a well-known device would be poor quality, but the quality's been okay, you know. It works fine. The handle wasn't really good and things like that, but, you know, it's little details, which is why I've found this replacement handle on eBay. I've done a video on this, actually. Hopefully this camera view is close enough so you can see what I'm doing. I'll try to zoom in a bit. Just going to do both sides just to make sure it's right through properly. And nicely soldered. There's a ground plane, it sucks a lot of the heat away. Thermal isolation. I do have a bit of that on there. But uh, sometimes it just needs a bit more because I've got such a big thick ground plane right around the area that um, I just wanted to improve it slightly more. You know, just I'm not cutting right into the solder, I'm just doing right on the edge of the solder where the legs finish. So all you should ever do is you end up cracking the traces or lifting the pads off or whatever. Be careful with things like that. I've got some 47k service mount here, which I've got pre-prepared. 
So I shall grab a couple of those out. I will use a bit of flux on these ones just to help it. Lift those into place. Oh, I did my round. Can't know that. Have to be faced the same way. Now I should be using hot air for this and really, but I've only got two service mount parts. It's just like, and it's super noisy. It's not really necessary. I'll just use this. I think they're on. Not pretty actually. It's pretty ugly. <laughs> well, wow. nice. Let's just turn this around. Let's just do this like this. Come on. This is not a pretty bloody example, is it? Now. Yeah. Here we go, that's better. Hot air would have been easier. Anyway, it's noisier. Okay, that's those two bits on. Now I've got to get another um, diode there. Another zener there. These other big resistors and stuff here. So, And there's other basic diodes there too. So I'll go and get all those parts sorted out and I'll come back. Right, now one of the things I've got to do is because of these resistor dividers here for the, for the voltage measurements in the software or the firmware we want to call it for the Arduino I actually have a calculation in there now I've rewritten it slightly and it will actually automatically calculate the divider ratio so I need to measure these resistors to find out exactly what they are so they can do a calculation this is R23 let's try this one first I've cleaned up a bit of flux around it just so that it doesn't affect the readings so that's 47.0 304 It's 47.04 pretty good accuracy actually check this one that's 46.3 46.3 46.3 uh, because I've got the diodes across them it's affecting it isn't it that's 47.1. I didn't meant to I meant to measure those before I put the diodes in. Hmm diodes are affecting the readings. Well I think that I need to go this way and just have done with that. So it's 47.07 and 47.16. And what say it was 40 46.91 I'm getting there it's very slightly we'll see I might have to tune it in software afterwards anyway but it gives us a good ballpark figure it's not going to be 100% accurate now I've got these two resistors here as well 4.714 4.72 ish 19 4.719 And R20 is that shunt resistor, which I don't remember from last time, but I'll already measure it. It's not currently connected to anything, so it should be okay. 146.02. I'll put those into the firmware when I do the Arduino programming. And, um, and that should at least give us a good starting point. I mean, there's other options of doing this high voltage section. I'm building on here because this is the project I'm doing, right? So it's allowing for any circumstance now what's one thing I did in my recent mailbag was a little module which is a high voltage DC module so it's actually in theory you could generate the DC with that instead of using this um, voltage multiplier circuitry here so um, that is something which is an option if you want to get one of those modules and use that instead of this they're probably going to be more stable and I haven't tested one yet I might actually have a go at it and see how it works the only reason we call this because it's part of the project and people might want to see how to assemble it or whatever you know otherwise I could just do the finished thing and say there you go done but um, obviously I want to release this and make it available to people to play around with and I mean the design I've come up with is just a design the same way of doing it it's not necessarily the best way of doing it it's a method which will work kind of in some form um, I'll expect what will happen is this will be made available to people and then um, 
people will improve upon the design and you know surpass what I've done. That's you know what I actually hope happens actually. Uh, so I've got a resistor here, 10k there I've got to put in, and I've also got to do this Zena diode here, which is these pairs now. Because I couldn't get the Zener voltage I wanted, I've had, I'm going to have to strap two Zeners together in order to generate the voltage I want. So, so it's a clamp voltage. Um, is that an issue? That is an issue. Ah. Okay, now this board was built by PCBWay. This board here was built by JLC PCB, right? Both of which are sponsored, right? So this was provided for free by JLC PCB, right? And this one here is provided for free by PCBWay. I've just noticed um, an issue. Well, this is what looks like an issue. Let's get an old pin. I should do it. You've got those four drill holes there for this um, header, which hopefully you can see on camera. Oh, I've got a manual focus on it. You can't see it. But um, there's four holes there. Now that hole there is smaller than the other three. That that pin goes through those holes. Just fine. It won't go through that one. It's too small. For some reason that hole is drilled smaller. That's kinda of odd. Yeah, that's weird. It looks like it's having a glitch there, because even the alignments aren't quite right. I might have to drill it out. Okay, so I've uh, soldered the two diodes together. Now I've discovered a small issue. My footprint here for the diode, the through hole is actually too small. Now it's okay for this diode, but this diode is actually a bit thicker and it doesn't go through the through hole. Um, but I do have a hole next to it which is the same trace, which was supposed to be a test point. So I can just use that one instead. It's not ideal, but you know, it, it'll work, it'll be fine. Now I've got a bit of heat shrink here, I'm going to slide over and um, just insulate it slightly just to give it a bit of a safety margin there. You don't like having high voltage things in for the ball because that point there is going to be um, 270 volts DC. Alright, so something else I have to do is put these capacitors on here too. So I'm going to do those now, although it's not easy now. I've got these legs on the back of there. That's a ground plane, so it's going to be a little bit hard. That's okay. Do one pad over on one side, which is a perfectly fine technique. I've already got a pass over this here, you probably can't see them. <laughs> right there. Okay, 0603 cap. What I tend to do, just for the sake of making it easier to actually install these things, what I do is I um is I'll put an 0603 cap on an 0805 pad. I just found it just makes it easier to do. Um, but it means you've got plenty of space here to actually get a soldering iron in next to it and um, solder the end up like that. You've heaps of room to do it then, it's just easy. When you've got the thing covering the entire pad you don't really have any contact area to get the um, part soldered down nicely, So, which is why I tend to do it this way. If you're doing um, hot air then it's you know, probably fine, doesn't really matter that much. but. Um, Down there, there we go. So it just makes it so much easier. And obviously, it's not sitting quite flush in the ball and stuff like that, but you know what? I don't really don't care. Um, not for this. Picking up the last one. Come on. Okay. I was really worried about it being flashing the ball. I'd hit it again with the hot air and just push them all down. Let's say I'm trying to record videos at the same time. It's a bit hard because the hot air makes such a bloody noise. Okay, so those are all down. Yeah, look good. 
sufficient flux in the solder, it's done the job. Okay, so that's those caps on there. These are purely just noise suppression, they're not really that necessary, it's just a precautionary thing. I thought well, I'll whack some caps on there just to help keep any noise out of the DC supply and just help smooth those. Um, these, these are purely for the input side, so it's any voltages measuring from here. It's helping to smooth those out and get any noise out of them, so it gives more stable readings, which is what I was doing with these um, these other caps across these resistors here. Right? I mean, it made a small improvement. It wasn't much, but um, it may be because of the way I've got it set up on there. So I've done it a bit better here, close, nice and close to the inputs onto the, the device here, so there's less induced noise and stuff like that as well. So um, I probably could have gone closer, but I thought well, that's a nice, convenient spot to put them in. You know, a bit of spare spare space there. Okay, um, well what I might do is just solder up what I've got. You can see I've got the um, Zeno diode stacked together there with heat shrink. So I'll, I'll solder up what I've got here and I'll look at doing these headers and stuff after that. Right, so I've got that header through, I had to mess around trying to draw that out a little bit. And anyway, so I've got the header through there now. Um, it's a bit of a mistake on PCB Ways part, but um, you know, I'm not sure, sure why that happened. I'll check the other boards actually and see if they're, um, they've got issues too. If it's just one board or if it's um, all of them. I'm sure it's not my, uh, my file which I sent them because it's just the header. It's a standard header, so it should all be fine. There's no reason for it to be different. So actually, I'll grab those balls down now. I've got them over here. Let's just check another ball out. And see if that's got the same issue. That one looks like it's okay. So maybe it's just one bad ball. I was just a bit unlucky about pick I had to pick up that one. Um, Oh, uh, maybe. I don't know, actually, the header's not wanting to go through either. Well, it does go through. Must have been, I didn't know it quite straight or something, but... Um, yeah, it does go. I don't know. Anyway, I obviously got a bit unlucky there. I picked up a dud board. The other boards are okay. But, um... So, I'm not quite sure why that ended up getting through to me, though. I shouldn't have ever received that board if it's not quite right, but... Uh, Alright, let's stick another one on over here. If I can stay in place, that'd be great. Oh my god, the thing zoomed in so far so you can try and hopefully see what I'm doing. I might go out of shot occasionally, so apologies if I do that. Well, that should be just there like that, for example. Okay, so we're coming along. Now I think the next thing we need to look at is the headers for the Arduino, which I've got sitting right here. Um, let's shove that in there like that, like that, like that. Okay, so obviously you've got, then you've got to try and get these straight. Now the trick to this is to actually plug them into the thing you want to plug into first, right? So if I get that plug into the Arduino, same for this one here, plug that in. Right, then they're definitely straight and they definitely line up. It's in place. All I've got to do now is tack it in. Let's just get the solder out a bit further. Just tack out the pins in and I can solder it properly after that. Let's just tack that one. Come on. That pin there. And that one there. That'll stop it falling out. Okay, now it won't go anywhere. I'll console the rest properly. Right. And yes, this row of pins along the top is supposed to be empty. Um, those aren't meant to be populated. It's just the uh, footprint I've used, because I designed a footprint for the Arduino 
um, in an eagle to allow for um, that those functions. If you you know making a bull which uses them, then you want them on there. And I have used them in another project, but uh, generally I don't tend to. So I don't tend to populate those pins. Same as these other ones, these other two sets here as well. I'm not using those either. Those pins aren't used in this project, so I don't know how to populate them. And of course, it's this plug in anyway. I could actually populate them if I needed to, but they don't go anywhere. There's no tracks, there's no, there's no um, connections for them anyway on the board, so there's no point doing it. Okay. Let's have a look at these, see if they look okay or not. Yeah, they look fine to me. So I've got the headers on there, the Duino's soldered on. Turn it out of the way for now. Um, I've got this resistor which I have to put in here, which I don't know what the value of yet. <laughs> All right. um, I might just chuck in, I don't know, a 10k or something, something like that. I don't know, maybe, maybe it's too big for that particular stage, because I've got to do this voltage drop across there for that shunt, so, yeah, yeah I'll chuck a 10k in there as a guess, then I'll worry about sorting the rest out. Now, so what I decided to do here is, is I was going to put a 10k in it, I thought oh, I'll try a 1k first, right? because it has got a drop of a bit of voltage across there. I don't want it, having, um, I don't want it to have to dissipate too much um, power, because the larger the resistance, the more power it will drop across it. So um, I thought I'll try a 1k first, see how that goes, I mean it's, I can go up or down from there. Um, so I'll just try that one. So I've got this big capacitor here, and then I'm going to look at wiring as well. Um, you see I've got a marking here on the side for a pot. Now, at the time I wasn't sure if I was going to mount the pot on the side or if I was going to run wires off it. With the likelihood of just being running wires off it. Um, so, it's not actually positioned correctly to be run off straight off the side anyway. But it kind of is, but not completely. So, uh, let's get this capacitor here. It's 20 UF, 500 volt is what I've got. So, I'll see what I've got. I think I've got a 450 volt. Um, which would be fine. Uh, 22s. Hmm. I just chose 22 because it sounds like a good number. It doesn't actually have to be that value. Um, those are 250 volt. Hmm. I have to look at a different capacitor then. I just I just thought 220 uh, 22 F would sound like a a nice value to use. Uh, so I might I might end up using this one. I mean that's 450 volt. I've got this clamp in the 420 volts anyway, so it's within the rating of the camp, so I think I'll choose this one. But I would recommend using the biggest thing you can fit in there, really. Um, so I'm going to go through the holes. Is the solder on there? No, it's not. That's fine. Let's do it. Just to help smooth out the DC supply a little bit. So that's mostly built now. Um, I just got to do wiring. I, don't know, I think it's a tidier board than this one. Nice revision, isn't it? slight smaller. I think that's a nice revision. I think it's a bit tidier. Okay, 